All right, Mr. Taylor is not available today and may not be available as Wednesday as well. So this is Mr. D, and I'm going to explain what I would like you to work today. Mr. Taylor said you've been working on Tinkercad, which is great, and now we're going to go towards making checkers. Now, if you would like to mold and cast something of your own, we're going to ask that you make a checker. All right, and you use checkers. It's a game board game, kind of like chess, it's a simplified version of chess. If you want to print something out in 3D printer, but you want it to be not a checker, you don't care about molding and casting, um, then you can make it something else and just try to keep it 80 millimeters by 80 millimeters, 10 millimeters, for example, those kind of dimensions. Um, it's a total of, say, 60, um, 64,000 millimeters, you know, millimeters cubed would be the thing, but in other words, you could be 40 by 80 by 20. You'd still get to that same number. Anyways, I look at the print's going to be about two hours. We'll help you guide your size. We can always scale it to fit. Now, for those of those who would like to learn how to mold and cast and maybe make their own checker set, we're going to learn how to do checkers. And for example, here's a Superman checker I made. And I can even show you, um, that's one example of the Superman checker I made. And then I'll show you other checkers that are out there. Here is a uh, little polar cap, but if I go back, and I'll show you if you look if you look up um, on Tinkercad. If you go up here and search your name and you type in Tom Dubik and press return, you're going to see one of this. And this is an old account I have. I have for my students. So go to this one that has the Young Engineers logo. Click on that, and you will see publicly shared all my publicly shared which of course it's going to go very slow with me because I need it to work right now there we go so there it is and if you go this with the cat right there is not is private see how it's private but this says public and this is just examples of the kind of checkers you can make and you're happy to copy and tinker and play with that notice if you look up here that duck just a duck image on top of a round is really not much you really want to add some curves and some outer edges on this, okay? I'm not really crazy about hex shapes because when you cast and mold those, they're like a gear. They sometimes make it hard to pull the mold out if it's a, if it's in a hex shape. And I'll sh we'll show you in lab what we mean by that. But if you wanted that, all you would do is, I have it because it's my account, it says Tinker This, yours would be copy and tinker and you could use it. Um, also, uh, we will need this, I'm gonna ask for this. Here's a link. Um, you're going to copy that link onto Edmodo. Um, we're going to use Google uh, Google Survey, but I think that presents as many problems as we thought it would solve. So you're going to copy that link onto Edmodo, and with your name, all right, your name, your location, your grade. So make sure when you draw your checker, put you. So this is checker examples. Tom, Charlotte, Middle School. All right. So if you were in Raleigh Lower School, it'd be Checkers Examples, Tom, Raleigh, LS. All right, I hope that makes sense. That way it's easy for me to make sure we get the checkers to the right people or whatever you want to 3D print. We have five 3D printers. We're getting a sixth one uh, to the, tomorrow or the next day. I've ordered it. It's, it's on shipment. I can't wait to get it for you all. All right, now um, let's go ahead. So we're going to be doing checkers. And let's go back to our lesson. So we're going to make a super, for example, Superman checker. And the dimensions of this are going to need to be 50 by 50, no higher than 10 millimeters. Also notice there's a plate on there. This top part is the checker. This bottom plate we're just using as to make better molds. And so, for example, on this Batman, there's the Batman checker, but we have this plate that we move on the Batman. And now we're going to glue that to the board that we're going to make our molds. We find that it works better. Um, and this Batman checker is slightly a little bit bigger because it's an oblong checker. Um, so there we go. And you can see it's seven and you get your heights again. This layer and this bottom layer are just there to help us mold and cast it. I should say cast and then later, uh, excuse me, mold and then later cast them. Okay. Um, you know, we don't really want to go much more than 50-50 if we can avoid it. Uh, this one is, because it's only 48 high up there, we shift it. We'll play with the designs a little bit to see how well they fit on our checkerboard. But here are two finished checkers. 
And so it's pretty cool that you would want to do it. Try to make your checkers, like I say, 50 by 50 and then by 10 if if it's a checker you want to cost. Otherwise, you can go up to 6,400 uh, millimeters cubed, 80 by 80 by 10, or you can be 40 by 80 by 20. I mean, we can play with that. We just want to keep our prints to two hours because even with five, six 3D printers, it's still printing out a lot of things. All right. All right. But when you saw the checker, you might not want to do Batman. You might want to bring in your own logo, your own pick. So that's where we get to vector graphics. So let's talk about what vector graphics are. All right. Vector graphics are the representation of images based on mathematical expressions. Um, Inkscape helps us use this quite a bit. Corel, um, any of Illustrator, any of those are, are vector based programs. These graphics are based on vectors known as paths, which lead to locations known as nodes. All right. What you need to know is the difference between vector graphics and, say, raster format. Raster, you think of JPEGs, GIFs, BPs. PNG, JPEGs are great for photographs. Awesome. Where vector graphics are better, because they use a mathematical analysis to make them, they scale really well. All right? So, well, this nose of this little line done in a vector graphic is really composed of layers. You know, and each cell is composed of these, say, four layers in this case. And we're just adding po points and lines and curves. You won't get the detail you would get in a photograph. You certainly can make out that this line. It's not as the same as a photograph. But this line cup can make you make it bigger or we can make it smaller. Whereas if it was a photo and we used a JPEG or, or a bitmap, those type of graphics, any of the raster graphics, it wouldn't scale well. And let me give you an example of what I mean. Here is this bottle with text on it. If I blow this bottle up seven times, on a vector graphic you can still read the word ice. Bitmap, they start to blur out. All right. Think of vector graphics or your fonts. They can get any size. We saw this when um, we did Scratch last fall, or if you ever do Scratch. On the left, when you, when you have the kitty cat this size, you don't notice it, but when you blow it up, if it's a vector kitty cat, it's this, look how nice resolution the bitmap starts to get a little blocky. All right? But like I say, there's advantages and disadvantages to ETH. We use the bitmap um, when we're doing photos, uh, JPEG, PNG, use those for photos because Vector really doesn't do a very good job with photos. But for scaling things up, as in here's a Vector, you can see that S gets big and it still looks great. Do that with a raster graphic, it doesn't look great. So we use Vector graphics for logos, billboards, and 3D printing and laser cutting, actually. All right. So let's say I need a duck graphic for a checker. You want to make a vector graphic so you can make many costumes and say, um, so I should say two things. I might need a duck graphic to make a checker or as a 3D printer. I might use a duck graphic if I was doing Scratch and I want a lot of different images. The way to do this is to go into Google, search images, and then select the advanced function right there. Let me pull this up a little bit so it looks better. All right. Click on that, and then we're going to select advanced search. When you do that, um, I'm not sure why, but all of a sudden, all my graphics got moved on me. So that goes there under I'm not sure why, but a lot of our graphics got moved here. There we go. I'll move them up here. All right. So file type you want SVG. Okay. There we go. All right. So there we go. File type SVG. And then what you get is a bunch of, you know, all these different ducks in their vector format. All right? No, there's no photographs there. Okay, so let's go ahead and say I'm going to do a panther. So let me show you an example of this. I'm going to go into Google. I'm going to search panther. All right? It shows images, panther. I'm going to go here to advanced settings. Band search, put on the file type, and select SVG. 
and do an advanced search. Okay? And honestly, I want outlines for what I'm going to do. I really, this isn't going to do real well with it. All you're going to do is get the outer edge of the hedge. This is a pretty good, what we're looking for. Not so crazy about the black as I like the white, like this one right here. All right, now, if I want that image, what I need to do is click on it, and then go to View Image, and then Save Image as, Save As, Panther Silhouette. I've already got it downloaded because you for class so um, there it is panther silhouette SVG now let me tell you some folks it's it appears now that companies recognize that fans that are going to print out something on a 3d printer are big fans and as long as you don't sell their images you're probably going to be fine um, it is you know it gets to be an issue, and it isn't fine, and it isn't cool if you download somebody's Panther like this, you start stamping them out and selling them. Now you're profiting off of somebody else's hard work. That's not cool. But, you know, and ideally, you just draw your own if you want to, but if you want to download it and you just make it for your own for your own self, and you're a big fan, say it's a Batman logo, so far, um, uh, companies have recognized that. No fans use. That's why you see Batman logos on Tinkercats. A couple companies don't like it and don't do it. And they, you know, they'll ask you to take them down. But most everybody else has been pretty good about it. So with that in mind, there's a, the image I'm going to use. So I will go into Tinkercad. Let's assume I'm already in Tinkercad. Right here. And I'm going to go to Features. Whoops. Let me go back to Tinkercad. I'm in here. Hang on. I'm waiting for my... All right, and I'm going to make a checker, kind of like this green one here. Um, here's some panthers right over there and, and naming it. So let me go through this. I'll pull this one out. I'm going to reuse it just to... I'm going to tinker this. So when I tinker it, it always gives you that silly name. So go to Design, Properties, give it a real name. I'm going to say Panther Checker. I usually make the first letter word lowercase and the letter panther checker Tom Charlotte um, school that was the ones you're saving for me and you would make this public if we're going to use it so I can get to it to 3d print it all right okay now here's let's pretend there was no, this is a, how did we get to this? Let's try it. Let's figure out how we might do this, okay? First thing I want to do is I want that Panther logo. So if I want to do that, I'm going to go to import right here. I'm going to choose a file. I'm going to take that Panther silhouette I just downloaded. Notice it's a .svg file. I'm going to hit open. Now, usually if you guys scale to 100% and the height 10%, it's going to be huge. Um, and you'll see, I'll, I'll go ahead and import it. You'll see how big see how big that is. It's like way too big. So we're going to delete it. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to bring it in at 10%. And I'm going to make it 3 millimeters or 5 millimeters tall. Let's do that. Okay. He's a little bit thick. And that's fine because we want him to sit in the checker. And we'll make him a little bit smaller here to fit inside our checker in a second. Let's get our helpers out here. Let's get a ruler, and this is really important. It gives us a sense how big things are. So he's already too big, right? So I'm going to shift key and scale him down a little bit more. So notice 30 is getting lower, 52.6. I'm going to go down to about 45 here. Just And this is, I'm playing with that a little bit. Okay, now I'm going to bring my cylinder in. And I can make the cylinder any color I want. I can just go up there if I wanted to make it that color. And I'm going to make my cylinder, um, I'm going to go off and start at, say, 45. Well, I'll make this 8. I don't want that. The height, I'm going to make 8. I'm going to make this dimension 45 and this dimension 45. Because they still have a plate to put this on. So here's my cylinder. That's 45. My cat is 40, 
ooh, is 45.18. So let's make him a little bit smaller. I make him right at 40. All right, now I'm going to lift him up. Remember, I use that black one to move him. You see that shadow? Try to keep the shadow on the checker. See right there is shadow. Make sure that's on the checker. That usually will help you guide it. It doesn't always get you there, but it gets you. It helps. Now, I'm going to sink him down into this. Because I want him sunk in there. He's 3.45. I'm going to put him in about that deep. All right. Now, that's looking pretty good. But let's let's not group them, but let's select both pieces. Then go to our other tool, Align. And let's center them this way. Across from left and right. Now up and down. All right, let's. And he's pretty centered right off the bat. So we're unfortunate. So remember, send them from both north, south, west, east, okay? And you can see in orange where he'll be, and, and he didn't really move when we changed him. All right, so so far, so good. Now, the next thing we can do is we can group them. And this is when, right now, I make a copy of them. <laughs> And then I redesign this because I don't want to lose the work I've done. And what I mean by that is I'm going to make some changes to this. And in case it goes poorly, I want to be able to go back. So I'm going to make a second one. I'm going to call this two. Save changes. There it is. I'm going to group this. Boom. He's grouped. And I can change that color if I don't like that color. If you want to make it you know, like a light. I'm not crazy about that. I would use light colors because it does make it um, read this. You can see the cat pretty well. If I make it a real dark green, it gets harder to see the cat. You know, and some really get, and there's black. I mean, you really, and I know he's a panther, so maybe we, you know, if you're panthers, you're a panther fan. There you go. All right, I'm going to do them gray right in this case. Now, I'm going to put out over here, they have, um, I'm going to put a tube, thin tube around them. I'm going to give it this look right here and pull the tube up above it. Because if you notice, this by itself is a checker, but it looks kind of half unfinished. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to look at my dimensions 45. I'm going to make the dimensions in this one, let's say 47. You know, just start playing with that a little bit. All right, and then I'm going to slide it right there. And it's still not quite right. Okay, so let's pull it out. 48. 48. And if I take the whole thing, again, the, I don't group it now because I'm trying to adjust it. I can't align it otherwise. Center it this way and then this way. All right, so now you can see it, right? And now I'm going to take that orange. That's two. I'm going to make that ten. And there I go. What's great about that is it's in the it's in the checker itself. All right. Now his limbs out here are a little bit more. See how his paws are in there? So I might, the easier thing to do is probably just to make it a little bit smaller in there like this. And then, yeah, let's go like that. Then let's do our, again, line them up. Just line. There he goes. So there we are. Let's see what hold total dimensions. 48, it's under 50. It's 10 that way. All right, we are good to go. So I can just group the whole thing and group them. And I've got my Panthers. And I can make them bigger if I wanted to because now the whole thing will scale, right? So I can make it 50. But 
Um, I could make him 50, but really I want to put a plate on him. So I'm going to move him over here. So I'm going to make a circle. That's what he's going to go on. So I'm going to go back up here to my cylinder. I'm going to make a cylinder by 50. All right. First, I'm going to drop the cylinder down here to three. Because this is going to be a building plate. If we're going to mat, mold and cast it, we're going to need this. It's not going to be real big that way because it doesn't need to be. should be at least 50. Um, excuse me. Um, three millimeters tall. And again, we use the align quite a bit. And I've also found is let's get the shadow. So I'm going to click it here. See, so wait till the shadow gets over it. Oh, okay, there we go. And then I'm going to do my align. Let's see how the line works out. I may need to make this a little bit bigger. Let's find out. Align. Okay. You know, if I want this to be 50, I'm going to make this one. Let me shift. Let me get this one over here. I'm going to make this 45. Just so there's enough here. Now let's line this back up. Make sure you get grab both of them. The alignment only works if you get both of them. Go ahead. I'm going to go to align. Adjust. Align. Here. See, I moved it in that direction. And then here. All right. Now, I'm gonna, it's easy if you move it so you can see what you're doing. Like you change your perspective. Now I'm just going to lower this. Make sure you always lower it in. Don't always just set on it. Make sure you lower it into it. Now, let's see how we're looking. I'll group the whole thing. And I might even make go to four on this one. All right. I want to make sure it's the checker. This checker is inside of that one. Don't just set them on top. Make sure they go into each other. I'm going to group this. Change the color. I don't want that. Let's go back to. And I'm going to group it. Now I've grouped it. Now I'm done. I'm within the 50 inches. See, 50, 50. Uh, my height's a little bit too high, so I'll make that 10. There you go. And so what will happen is we will glue this bottom plate to the bottom of, a, believe it or not, a uh, popcorn box. Glue it on there. And then pull our mold, mold material on there. So this plate here is just to help us form the top half of this checker. All right. And so that's how you make a checker. So remember, figure out what kind of logo you might like. Figure out what, I'm going to see if I can, you know, figure out what kind of logo you might want on your checker. And uh, you can do some really neat stuff. Again, we'll print out, your checker is going to look like this when you're done, but we need all your molding or castings. You make the mold and the castings, always get that backwards. We need this to help mold and casting, and you'll see that in the lab. All right? And then I would save this, and I might call this, I'm going to go design, properties, you know, final. Okay, MC, MC, Charlotte, final, Panthers chat. So I'm going to do final, so to tell myself, hey, I want this. Finals, Panther check, save changes. And I might even get rid of this one. Because all I really want is this checker. There we are. And I make this public. Uh, tinker this. So what I do is I would go to make that public, then properties. Make sure it's public. Save changes. Never put your full name on this. Don't ever do that, please. And then... Go back here, and then where you see final, if you click on this right there, I now have a link that I can share with everybody. All right? 
Okay then, please, today lab, let's work on your checkers. All right, take the time we have now to go ahead and work on your checkers. Thank you very much.